so those are the fundamental results for a two-level system in terms of the rabbi frequency and, uh, and gamma, which is the strength of the perturbation. But uh, what m our motivation for the course was to look at not only excitations as a function of time of the system, uh, when you have a continuous pulse, which is very long, which is not very realistic. In experiments, you usually have a short pulse, which excites the system, and then you uh, wait and you see what happens. For example, in NMR, you apply a magnetic field for a very short period of time. To a sample, you flip all the spins in one direction, and then you wait for all the spins to relax, and you look at the magnetic field throughout the whole time. So I don't know. So that, that was, I asked that question when this was introduced. I asked that question to Dmitry, and I don't know if that I don't know if that was his motivation for going into what's next. But we developed um, a method for describing what's called free induction decay, which is you look at the system how it relaxes as a function of time. Uh, so the, the math was the, the mathematics of it was very complicated, and you kind of have to go through it in order to understand it conceptually better. But you can also, but you can get a feel for it. So what is the block sphere? The block sphere is um, a very general mathematical construct. When you have a system, when you have a two-level system, uh, for example. Um, the easiest way to explain it is uh, in terms of spins in uh, when you have, can have spin up and spin down. Uh, but uh, how can you tell which way your total spin projection points? Um, uh, this, you can just look at uh, the angles theta and phi, which define what's called the block sphere. So this is a solution to a very general Hamiltonian, uh, very general H naught. Uh, the solution is kind of lengthy, but this this is a very general result that comes out. So a, a way to for a way to look at it. It is a superposition of uh, ground and excited state. It is this normalized coefficients. It is a super. That's yes. That's yes. It's superposition of ground and excited state where the ground state is kind of oriented along the z-axis. So if your total vector points along the z-axis exactly, then you're in the ground state. As uh, you move away from the z-axis, the more you move away from the z-axis, the more perpendicular you are to the z-axis, the more you are into the excited state. And you can just see that the z-axis only depends on theta. And that's how it's defined, right? Um, the z-axis is, uh, is only is special because it, for example, it's like the z-axis in the uh, complex plane. I've even heard, not, even, not here, but I, going over this, I saw it uh, com uh, compared, I think, in Sakurai, that the block sphere is like the complex plane in three dimensions. That's, that's it. Okay, so box here very very useful tool for illustrating spin projection. So okay, so let's let's move.